My name is Kevin Hines, and in the year 2000, I nearly died by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. I was depressed, I was terribly suicidal, and I thought I was a burden to my family. This was the furthest thing from the truth. I am beautiful, and so are you. Life is the greatest gift we've ever been given, or will ever be given. So live it with me, and be here tomorrow, and every single day after that. Welcome to the Mental Health Marvels Podcast. What's cracking, Hope Nation? It is your friendly neighborhood, Kevin Hines, and this is another Mental Health Marvels Podcast. That's Mental Health Marvels, not Marvels, Marvels Podcast, where we can all be stewards of change for people in mental pain. Uh, today, I have a phenomenal guest, and I want to just break down some of her accomplishments today. Her name is Maria Grazia Butita. She is from Italy. She's an amazing human being, uh, a native Sicilian, Sicilian Italian speaker. Maria is a national certified counselor, an author, a motivational speaker, a peer support specialist, a wellness and health enthusiast, and a passionate mental health and disability advocate. Um, Maria Grazia holds a master's degree in arts and counseling, clinical mental health counseling from the College of New Jersey. And she is the author of Now I See, How I Battled Blindness, Mental Illness, and Expressive Habit, and Lived to Tell the Tale. Has also been featured in Huffington Post, Medium Writers Digest, and Counseling Today, to name only a few. Maria Grazia is a tireless advocate, who reaches and educates and speaks to college students and organizations about her blindness and her long-term battle with depression and anxiety. You can learn more about her after the show by visiting embracingyourdifferences.com. Embracingyourdifferences.com. Maria is one of my greatest friends. Maria, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks for having me. It's, it's so good to be here and so great to see you. It's great to see you. Great to see the work you're doing uh, and the impact it's making. It's so phenomenal, so exciting. Uh, I want to get into, just to start off, I want I want to share one of your book reviews, uh, because anyone who, who, who loves to read needs to read your book. Um, and I, I want to go ahead and do that right now. So the book, once again, is titled, Now I See How I Battle Blindness, Mental Illness, and Express to Have It, and Live to Tell the Tale. Can you tell people first, before I read this, this, uh, this, this uh, book review, what is... What, what was the impetus in you writing the book? Why did you do it? Yeah, so I have a journey where I was born and raised in Sicily. I was misdiagnosed a lot. And I also struggled with some mental health, anxiety, some depression, suicidal ideations even. Um, so I went through this journey and you know, along the way, I met people like yourself, Kevin, who maybe share their stories, and I just saw the impact it had on other people. And so I knew that I needed to share my story. Um, you know what it is, Kevin, when we find ourselves struggling, we often feel like we are alone, no one, there's nobody out there who understands us. So this book is really for people to hopefully help them feel like they're less alone. There's somebody out there. I might not necessarily understand what it's like to, everyone is going to experience anxiety and depression or, you know, even blindness differently. But this is a book just to let people know, hey, you're not alone. I know the struggle is real, but I got your back. Read this book. And, you know, I provide some useful feedbacks as far as my journey going through, you know, therapy, taking medication and, you know, just living one mentally well, not mentally perfect, uh, but really just doing so much work toward myself to be where I'm at today. I like that living mentally well, not mentally perfect. There's no perfect mental health situation. I'm going to get right into what is this, these book reviews. This is a really, a really good one. Uh, this, is, this is a book review from Kyle Maynard, speaker, best-selling author, SP award-winning mixed martial arts athletes, and first quadruple amputee to ascend Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Akonga, I can't pronounce that, without the aid of prosthetics. <laughs> he writes about your book. 
This is from Kyle Maynard. Disabilities are actually more universal than we realize. We all have them to one extent or the other. Maria Grazia is a testament to the fact that we get to choose whether we become the victim to them or not. I believe she actually sees a lot more than we do and we could do well to borrow from some of her vision. That is an amazing piece. And then it says a must read. So if that doesn't make you go get the book right now, I don't know what will. Well, let's get right into this podcast. I have a lot of questions for you, Maria. And we have it, a, little bit of, a little bit of time here. So I just want to, I want to get right sure. into it. Um, so you, 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 you told me before, and, I, and I've learned about, you, about this, this about you, and it's public knowledge, it's in the book. Um, you have what's called cone dystrophy, uh, blindness to others who wouldn't understand it. What, what is exactly is cone dystrophy and what it, how does it differ from general blindness? Okay. So that's a good question. Obviously I get that asked. I get asked that a lot. So first of all, let me just quickly clarify because when it comes to blindness, Kevin, there's this big confusion. Uh, we often hear the term blindness and we think, oh, blindness, it's somebody who cannot see anything at all. But blindness is often used as an umbrella term and underneath encompass different types of blindness, different levels of blindness. So again, somebody who's blind like myself doesn't mean that we can't see anything at all. Um, so when you find yourself, maybe you encounter someone like myself, you know, don't be too quick to judge um, and don't be afraid to ask questions like you're doing today, Kevin. So let me explain a little bit about cone dystrophy. Um, and again, this is my experience with cone dystrophy because somebody else might have cone dystrophy and maybe they have different symptoms too. So never compare somebody's story with someone else. We all know that everybody's unique. Everybody's gonna experience something differently. But the takeaway message is when it comes to blindness, we often use this term to classify all ranges of blindness. So what is cone dystrophy? So I was born with a rare eye condition that unfortunately forces me to wear sunglasses because I have a defect in my cones. Uh, quick biology, right? Going back to your, uh, you probably remember this cones and rods, Kevin. Uh, cones are the portion of the eye that helps to see in bright condition. And then the rods help us see in dark condition. So right. unfortunately, my cones don't work well. So anytime I'm exposed to light, I have to wear my sunglasses. So as you wow. can see, I'm wearing my sunglasses now. So I experience photophobia, which is that sensitivity to light. I am considered legally blind. I do have some vision. I have color blindness. Um, I have nystagmus, which is a constant shaking of the eye. If I stare at something for too long, you're going to start, looks like you're going to start dancing any minute if I look at you too long, Kevin. <laughs> um, so it really depends on the environment. The more I'm familiar with my environment, the easier it is. And of course, the lighting is its sort of the biggest issue for me. Um, so I think that's wow. the best way to kind of hopefully uh, for people who don't know what dystrophy is kind of that's probably how I would go about explaining it. And then if they have further questions, I would kind of elaborate. That's a, that's a phenomenal way to explain it. So people can understand that it's not one size fits all. Exactly. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, so if your diagnosis of cone dystrophy would have been detected sooner, or if they didn't have, or if you didn't have this diagnosis now, how would your life have been different? Oh my God. I ask myself that question all the time. And, you know, I, you know, as you know, I was born and raised in Sicily and there was just so much stigma surrounding blindness and surrounding disability, surrounding mental health. So in a way, I think, I don't know if it would have made a difference as far as stigma is concerned, but I think it would have definitely provided some relief. I think I would have maybe been more confident growing up. Obviously, I spent so much time at doctor's offices. My parents were worried. I was mentally challenged. Uh, it, that's what teachers often thought of me. 
So I might not have been misdiagnosed. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's, there's beauty in I have the challenges and the struggles, Kevin, I think have made me and shaped me the person I am today. So in a lot of ways, I would not be here talking to you if it wasn't for cone dystrophy. That's a fair enough assessment. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a positive way to look at it. You know, you, 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 you've helped a lot of people with your words. You've helped a lot of people with your book. And there's something to be said about the fact that this is the path your life was meant to take. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, on that note, if you can go back in time, would you do anything differently? Yes, I think we could all do something differently, right? Um, yeah, you know, I, we, you know, I talk about it in, in detail in the book, and I briefly introduced that at the beginning, but, you know, I am somebody who did experience a lot of anxiety and uncertainties and securities, um, depression, um, at some point, like I said, suicidal ideations. And I think one of my biggest regret, Kevin, is not speaking up sooner. I, you know, I'm pretty blessed to say I have a great support system. My mom is phenomenal. She's always been just there for me. And somehow I always felt like if I opened up and if I shared my story, that I would be like a burden to her. Um, I don't want her to take the guilt or blame herself for me feeling this way. So I think one of the biggest mistakes um, or really regret, I mean, is not opening up sooner because, uh, you know, today, if I'm ever struggling or if I'm ever feeling anxious, I immediately talk about it with her and it just feels so much better. Get a, get everything off my chest. So I think that's one of the things I would definitely do and recommend, you know, don't hold it in. Don't feel like you're alone. Uh, wherever, you know, for me, it's my mom, for, for you, it could be somebody else, but just know that you're not alone and just, you know, somebody always has your back. I think they, um, say, I think they say a pain shared is a pain halved, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, if, 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 you, if you keep it in, if you bury it, if you silence your pain, it's only going to bubble out, burst and express itself in negative ways. So exactly. A great point of interest there uh, for the podcast, for sure. Yeah. Um, Maria, how do you describe your, your mental health today? What, what, are you, what are you going through today? What's your day-to-day -day mental health uh, life like? So the first thing I'm going to say, Kevin, is that, you know, and I want to share this because for the longest time of my life, Kevin, I was on this mission, unrealistic mission that I wanted to just wipe clean anxiety. I wanted to get rid of depression. I wanted to even cure blindness. Um, and the truth is that over the years, I have learned not to get rid of this beast, anxiety and depression that I think is very part of my life. And I think a lot of it is, you know, genetic uh, for me as well, but I've learned to manage. And I think that's the term we need to use more often. Um, it is a lot of hard work that I do. I work out three times a week, Kevin, 30 minutes, um, 30 minutes for three times a week. Uh, I meditate, hang out with mom. We like to go bike riding, um, when the day gets better, I guess, spring, summer, um, walks, my dog, I take him for a walk. So I have built this beautiful support system of, therapy, people that I care about, my dogs, and just doing, working hard. It is not easy. Um, I would say my mental health is, I'm in good shape because I do all the things that I need to do to stay mentally well. And sure, you know, do I have perfect days? No, I slip sometimes, but if I do, I just know how to get back up because I have the right tools and resources to help me move forward. You've built this routine and this regimen, which we know is the best way to defeat mental illness one day at a time, is to build a routine lifestyle. It's the best way to be the most mentally stable as possible when you're going through these problems and issues and struggles. It's fantastic advice. Uh, what, what is some advice you have uh, for someone who's going through something similar to what you were having that you had to go through? 
what would you say to that person out there or those people out there that have just been diagnosed with cone dystrophy or something like it? Uh, how do you give them encouragement? I think, you know, like I said, when we go through, and I said this before, but when we go through something in our lives, we often think that there's nobody out there in the world that's going to understand mm -hmm. us. And the truth is, I think just keeping in mind that there is somebody, you're not alone, right? I'm not alone with cone dystrophy. There are a lot of folks out there who are blind, visual impaired, anxiety, depression. So for me, you know, it was really good to kind of connect with other folks who shared similar experiences. Not the same, again, we're all unique, but I think it's really important for people to know that they're not alone. Um, and just the resources. I think it was extremely helpful to connect with those resources. Good, fantastic. I want to I want to go back, uh, way way back. Yeah. All the way back to when you were born. You were born in Sicily, in Italy. I was. Uh, and and you you know you, you talk about how your culture definitely shaped the person you are today. A lot of your values and beliefs uh, st started right from birth. For example, uh, your religion, the culture you were born into, being family oriented, and the importance of food, to name a few. Can you talk about those in a broad sense? Um, about each of those and, and tell me how they impacted your life. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, I think family um, is very important in my culture. So obviously, you know, I take, um, you know, I take pride in my family and that's, you know, families first and the same with my culture. You know, I talk about, um, you know, going through these really tough times in my life and, you know, being born Catholic, I mean, till this day, I have, you know, I hold on to that, you know, I am Catholic and, you know, I believe in God and I think God has a purpose for me. And so his, you know, I have faith, I hold on to that faith. And I know, you know, everyone has their own, you know, faith and religious and beliefs. So I think, um, you know, at times, difficult times in my life, I've really learned to just rely and turn to my faith and pray. And that's been really helpful. Um, and then honestly, Kevin, I'm just really happy and blessed to know what I'm food, you know, just to, uh, <laughs> you know, no offense to Americans or anything like that, but, you know, to just have these amazing meals, uh, <laughs> just to, you know, to know what food and food is and, um, you know, to, to be, I mean, you know, I, I grew up in this beautiful culture food amazing the place was amazing um highly recommended if you want to go and visit go for it take after COVID-19 is all over definitely take a trip in Sicily enjoy the mountains the ocean the view it's it's all beautiful yeah I mean it, it, Italy is one of the most beautiful countries on the entire planet if you if you ask me uh far and wide uh one of the most astoundingly gorgeous places to, to be not to mention the food is part of the a huge part of the culture um and 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 and, and, and italians take great pride in making great food for their patrons they, they really yeah. do they really do like just like food that like melts in your mouth kind of food like just it's just yeah. like, uh my wife and i have been there several times we were there uh after our after our honeymoon uh, it's just, it's, it's just an amazing place to be. So, um, are you, are you living there now or do, are you back in the States? No, I am in New Jersey right now currently. So I am not in Italy. I do have, you know, my sister, I have a nephew, uh, grandparents, you know, relatives and things like that. So okay. everyone's back at home right now. Nice. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to fast forward a little bit to your, to your, high school or adolescent age, you, you dealt with a lot of bullying because of what you were going through with your, with your, right. with your vision uh, and how it was affecting your physicality. Like you, you, you would be dizzy and, and yeah. your balance would be off because of course that would, that, that comes with, that's a part of your vision is your balance. Um, right. What was it like being bullied for something you can't control? Yeah. So that was really hard because at the time before, you know, this is before diagnosis, obviously, I didn't know what, what was wrong with me. Um, you know, people always ask me, how could you not have known? Um, because there, there comes a point in my life that I, 
I kind of knew something was wrong with my eyes, but at the same time, I was born this way. And so I didn't know all these different diagnoses were put in my head. So I had no idea what to believe. So I really kind of was clueless. I had no idea. But going through that, getting bullied definitely scarred me. So I mean, anyone honestly who's listening right now and is being a bully, I beg you to stop because it definitely scarred me in a lot of ways, Kevin. Yeah. Um, words hurt. And, you know, till this day, you know, it's uh, it's something that I think about. And, you know, for those of those people who are getting bullied, it's really important that you speak up and um, that you talk to somebody because it's it's not OK. But, yeah, kids were mean, you know, they would toss things at me uh, because they knew I couldn't catch it. They would try to trip me all the time. So it was it was really challenging. It was definitely um, a really scary sad moment I think of my life but again you know definitely it has shaped me I till this day I mean today I don't allow bullying in my life I learned to speak up and you know definitely I think that has made me stronger as well you know there's something to be said about that 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 that, that kind of action can build resilience but it, it's not it's not deserved or wanted for anybody or for anybody no. absolutely I was heavily bullied in grade school and high school uh and it, it, although it, although it did break me at the time, uh, and it had a causative factor in, in, in my later attempt, um, it also, in a sense, made me stronger. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, 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 a thin line that it, that it crosses a path. You know, you get to, yeah. you're, you're, you're on, on one side, it's just breaking your heart and you feel so alone when you're being bullied by so many people and you have nobody in your corner. On the other side, if, if you allow it to, it's building your resilience. Yeah. Um, bullies need to back off though. They need to stop treating no poorly. And, the, and these, these cyber bullies today have no face and no name. They're, they're behind, a, they're behind a, a, a screen grab. They're behind a, a, a a screen name and and it really is sad that they can't uh, um they can't express themselves in a way that is appropriate to the to the people they're talking to instead they make up lies vicious lies and rumors yeah. they hurt people's reputations um they hurt people's feelings and they they when you're talking about grade school and high school kids these kids aren't fully developed yet they don't know that yeah. when they're 35, that bullying at 15 is not going to matter. I yeah. don't know that at 65, that, that, that it's all gonna be washed away. Yeah. All, they see is, all they see is that everyone in their circle sees the message online and thus they, they turn to things like attempted suicide. It's just, it's just terrible. It is, um, yeah. So if we can say anything to those bullies, I think it's just, just say this, you know, how would you feel if it was being done to you? Absolutely. It wouldn't feel good. And, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, there's no need to hurt other people with your words or your actions. Absolutely. Not. And you just know. ask, you know, the bullies themselves should ask why they're doing it. You know, yeah. is it to look what is cool? Reason? Is it what's well, hurt, your... hurt, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. yeah hurt people your... hurt people. We know so, that a lot of people who bully are themselves going through some situation or maybe they're trying to avoid their problems. So they pick on somebody else. You know? I know a lot of my bullies were were being the, the victims of abuse in their own homes. Yeah. You know, I, I know a particular gentleman, young, a young man whose father was beating him and his brothers, and then his brothers and him were getting in fights themselves with each other. Yeah. Um, and and the way he took it out was he he made me his get his uh his punching bag. Yeah. So he would get he would get in trouble at home. He would come to school and he would beat me up, and that was his mo, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 today, you know, Maria, I forgive that person because I, if I saw him today, yeah. I would just literally want to give him a hug and tell him I wish him well, you know. Yeah. He, yeah. Needs a, he needs a hug. He needs some hope in his life. Yeah. You know? But but moving forward, um, yeah. I want to get into this because we talked about briefly your 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 stress, anxiety, and and your depression. Um, your, your panic attack, your first panic attack and confusing anxiety with heart problems. I've actually 
got someone to talk to you about this, but please take it away. Okay, sure. So I experienced my very first panic attack when I was in eighth grade, right? Uh, the bullying was happened. I was overwhelmed. I was diagnosed with condystrophy. Had no idea what my life, what my future would hold like, um, would look like. And so I experienced my first panic attack, honestly. And I just remember this uncomfortable feeling like I thought my heart was going to come out and pop out of my chest. Yep. And if you've ever had, or anyone really has ever experienced anxiety, you know, you feel like you're having a heart attack. I was like sweating. I thought I was going to pass out. I was going to vomit. And at the time, I had no idea that it was an anxiety attack. I thought it was just a, maybe I was having a heart attack at 14, 15 years old. I thought I was having a heart attack and I would beg my mom, like, please take me to a, a cardiologist and get my heart checked. Obviously, it was not a heart attack. <laughs> Thank yeah. God, right? At yeah. 15 years old, no, you yeah, cannot get a heart attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, eventually I experienced a lot of panic attacks. Um, so during my, so just moving forward, I attended a community college just because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was taking courses. Um, and so that was my first time where I experienced a lot of panic attacks. And I also had a major breakdown, like I was experienced, I was feeling really depressed. And the way I explain it is just like I was this like balloon. And then eventually I just popped. I had this breakdown. Um, again just this chronic depression uh just all these panic attacks um and then you know eventually like i said i got the help i needed i was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety and um disorder and a depressive disorder as well so wow wow amazing i dealt with panic attacks um and i would have heart palpitations too and it felt like your heart's out of your chest you feel like you're gonna die yeah um, but, it's but not if, fun. The thing is, if you actually know about heart attacks, uh, they're a much different situation. The, 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 the symptoms for heart attacks are much different than heart palpitations and, yes. and, uh, and, and, and that, that, that serious, severe anxiety that comes with those heart palpitations. Um, so, when, but when you don't know that, you don't know that. So how do you- You don't know that. Uh, yeah, you don't know how to distinguish you know, that. People that talk about having, surviving a heart attack talk about a crushing weight on their chest. And they talk about uh, an immeasurable pain in their left arm and numbness in the left arm. Uh, but they rarely talk about heart palpitations and things like that. But we didn't know, we don't know that. So how do we figure that out when, you, when you're first going through, when you're 14 years of age? I mean, it's just, you know- yeah. Never tell. You're just, you have no idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I saw the best doctors and yeah, yeah thankfully it wasn't. And they wouldn't know what to do because they, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're glad you're okay and you're safe. Yes. And we're glad, and, and, and we're sorry that you've gone through so much, the bullying, the, the development of cone dystrophy, the misdiagnoses, um, the depression and, and the, and the, and, and the anxiety. Um, I want to get, I want to, we have, a, we have about six minutes left here. And I want to just talk to you. I want to know a couple things. Um, I want to know if you've ever thought of or attempted suicide and how you, how you came from that to find hope. If we can wrap this up with yeah. that. I think we'll give a good message to the people watching home, the mental health marbles out there in the world right now. Yeah. So like I said, I was in my 20s when I, I was at this community college. I was experiencing panic attacks. I was experiencing severe you know, depression. And I was having constant thoughts of suicide every single day for the past, you know, every day for, I want to say a good year. Um, I just, I had lost all hope. I was overwhelmed. Um, and so honestly, um, I didn't get through this alone. I saw, you know, once I was able to open up to my mom, that is, when she helped me find the right help. So therapy, for example. Um, so I started attending therapy and started taking some medication as well. Um, so it took an effort of surrounding myself with positive people like my mom 
and good friends who had my back, honestly, and just learning all these tools, Kevin, uh, breathing techniques, which eventually, you know, helped me with my panic attacks, uh, but also therapy was really important and a combination of medication. Um, that was the first step of that I needed to take to, in order for me to get out of that hole. But I had to reach bottom before I can get back up. And eventually with the right, you know, resources and tools, I was able to, uh, it sounds really easy, but I'll tell you, I had moments where I would get better and then I would slip again. But it was in that moment that I needed to reach out to the people I love and, uh, and eventually I got myself back up. It's amazing, Maria. For the people watching who, who uh, are inspired by your story and want to reach out to you, how do they do so? So the best way to do it is just uh, they can go on my website at uh, www.embracingyourdifferences.com. Uh, and there you can, you know, you'll see all my social media. You can message me, book me for one of your talks. Um, so that's the best way to do it. And Kevin, we are giving away three books today. Um, not yeah. sure if you went in and mentioned that. Uh, yeah, we're giving away three of Maria Garcia's books today. Uh, and and why, don't you, why don't you tell them one more time the title of that book and, and sure i actually have a copy right here so i'm going to oh. just quickly show them this is the copy right here now, I, now see. I see how i battle blindness mental illness and espresso habit and live to tell the tale um not sure about the espresso habit to be honest I'm, that's a work in progress um but uh but yeah i want to be giving out three of these books so kevin all they have to do is follow at least three on my social media platform so if you can link them on your video today by yeah, friday in a week i'll go ahead and just randomly pick three folks i'll message them and um i'll send a personalized copy for them in the mail by next fantastic. week fantastic we'll, we'll get we'll get this video out um let's see what, what 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 day of the week is it today it's it's today it's monday, monday. um Martha luther king actually yep yep and so. so so what we'll do is we'll get this video out by thursday and so if you if you write to us before if you write write to us follow follow maria on her three social medias uh we'll link them in the description below um, and then we'll get we'll get three copies out to those three deserving folks who wanted to uh, put their hat their, their name in the hat for uh, for this uh, for this uh, giveaway. Thank you. Perfect. Maria. And please let me say that Kevin Hines, yes, right here, Kevin Hines wrote the forward to this book. I did write the forward of the book. Yes, I did. I <laughs> so that's book. another reason why you need to another get this copy. Miss it. Don't miss the book. Don't miss uh, sharing this podcast with as many people as you can hope helps heal be here tomorrow every day after that maria thank you so much for being thank on the you, podcast Kevin. We appreciate thanks for it. having me thanks it was uh i'm so blessed thank you so much for making the time and having me so glad to Take thank care. you be well and be here tomorrow